Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to a video on short run cost of production. Let's take a look at the business known as Chipotle Grill. Big business, particularly in the United States. It's right up there in terms of the top 10 most valuable food brands in the world, uh, measured in millions of US dollars. McDonald's obviously streets ahead, but Chipotle's right up there ahead of Taco Bell and uh, just behind Tim Hortons and Burger King, according to brand value. When we look at short run cost, of course, keep in mind the short run is a fairly artificial time period where there's at least one fixed input of production and there are lots of variable inputs. And the way that businesses increase um, production means they have to use more variable factors. Hence, there are fixed costs and variable costs. And the total cost of a business is the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost. So this chart shows the restaurant operating cost of Chipotle Mexican Grill from 2008 through to 2017. And you can see that their costs in total have more than tripled over the last 10 years or so. Why might that be the case? Well, there's a breakdown there of some costs, including beveraging and packaging, labor, other operating costs and occupancy costs, such as the rental costs on buildings. So here's a quick three, two, one. Give me three possible causes of rising costs for Chipotle Grill. Give me two ways in which Chipotle could increase their productive efficiency to reduce their unit costs. And give me one factor that would determine whether higher costs for the business can be passed on to their consumers, their customers, to help protect their profit margins. Let's do a quick three, two, one. Three possible causes of rising operating costs for Chipotle. Well, first of all, it could be an increase in labor costs. Typically, workers in the business will be paid the minimum wage. The minimum wage, uh, if it exists in the US states, is federally set at a federal level. So it could be the case, perhaps, there's been an increase in the federal minimum wage. Quite a few states in the United States already moving towards a $15 an hour minimum wage. Perhaps another cause could be increased prices for the ingredients used in making the burritos or the, the cost of energy and fuel in stores. It could be the case that rental costs for the outlets have gone up. So the first two would be an increase in variable costs. An increase in rental costs would be an increase in fixed expenses. Number two, give me two ways in which Chipotle could increase their productive efficiency to reduce average costs, otherwise known as costs per unit. One could be through better management particularly if they can streamline the production process as businesses such as McDonald's, for example, are famously very well equipped to do. A second approach could be to invest in capital, invest in new machinery, in new technology, new plant and equipment, which could, in theory, over time, once workers are trained properly, lead to higher productivity, because an increase in productivity, all other factors remaining the same, brings down the unit cost. Give me one factor that will determine whether higher costs for Chipotle can be passed on to customers to help protect their margins. Well, I think the one key factor here is the price elasticity of demand, PED. And if the numerical coefficient of price elasticity is less than one, in other words, if demand is price inelastic, then businesses, including Chipotle Grill, have more scope, more freedom to increase their prices, particularly when costs go up. Price elasticity of demand will tend to be low if there are relatively few close substitutes in the market. We say here that the cross price elasticity of demand is low. Customers will continue to buy even if the price rises by, let's say, 5 or 10% if the menu costs go up. One reason of course, why operating costs have more than tripled is the fact that there are many more uh, Chipotle Mexican Grill restaurants worldwide. It's one of the big success stories. Go back to 2007, the year before the financial crisis, they had only 700 stores worldwide. That figure has now increased to 2,490. In 2018, there was the business has grown very, very rapidly, dramatically over the last 10, 11 years or so. And it is a favourite of consumers both in America and in many other countries as well.